flowers bring happiness. That's the answer that I got when I asked during my job interview almost one and a half years ago on the question, why wouldn't you turn those valuable greenhouses that are now full of ornamentals into greenhouses that can be full of crops, crops that can help feed the world, that can help reverse the effects of climate change to increase the food production. And then the answer was, flowers bring happiness. Later that day, on the same day that I had the job interview, I went into the greenhouse for the first time. And the company that I work for, uh, working with chrysanthemum, uh, which is of course a flower that is cut, uh, in, in that greenhouse, uh, I saw something that I never had seen before. Because normally, when I studied crop breeding, uh, a lot of it was focused on crops. And those crops are often green, green, green. And the differences between those crops are often very small. Uh, and you can think about the fact that the yield difference is, for example, small differences in yield. Uh, then you can think, for example, that a plant is instead of producing 20 kilograms a year, 20.5 kilograms a year. But in this greenhouse, I saw something completely different. Because in this greenhouse, it looked like this. There was a huge variation of phenotypes in colors, in shapes. It was completely different than what I had seen before. And that made me wonder, how is it possible that there is so much variation even within a population, because all these plants here have the same parents, which is, for me, incredible. And the answer to this question, how this is possible that there's so much phenotypic variation, is the fact that they're very heterozygous. So all these parents that are used for these uh, chrysanthemum have two different alleles on every gene spot. And therefore, the segregation of genes makes all plants unique. But that's not the only answer. Because we, as humans, are also highly unique. And that is also due to the heterozygosity that is present. However, in humans, you can actually see it when a child comes from certain parents. Normally, the phenotype is not that different from the parent. In chrysanthemum, this can actually be the case that the phenotype really differs a lot from the parents. So there is something more, and this is related to this picture. Because here we see a strawberry. Maybe some of you do recognize this as an example. Because to the left and to the right, we have a strawberry with the same genome. Only the strawberry to the left possesses four copies, four copies of the genome, while the strawberry to the right only has two copies of the genome. And this increase of copy number of the whole genome makes, that these, makes it that these fruits become much bigger. And maybe this also happened with chrysanthemum, because chrysanthemum has six copies of the genome. And of course, when you have six copies, which are all different, there are a lot of unique combinations of genotypes that can be made. And there is some extra thing with chrysanthemum, and that's the amount of genes that are present in the genome of chrysanthemum. Because how much genes do you think that a plant like chrysanthemum possesses? To make it a bit easier, in Arabidopsis, which is a model plant for research, which has a, like a minimum genome size, there are around 25,000 genes. For humans, for us, there are around 30,000 genes. For chrysanthemum, it is estimated that there are, that are, that there are around 75,000 genes, so almost double the amount. So basically, we are working with a plant that has six copies of the genome, uh, often six completely different copies, or like homologous copies, but still with a lot of mutations, and with even more genes that can be transcribed. And this is also something that we encounter at our breeding company. Because here also, breeders encounter the fact that there are very, a lot of unique plants. And this makes it that our breeding material really consists of one big haystack. 
this one big haystack. And basically, our breeders are constantly busy to find those small needles that are present that have the unique combination of beneficial genes that all segregate randomly throughout the populations. And this process can take years to find those unique plants. And then I was also wondering, we have this huge phenotypic variation within chrysanthemum due to its huge genotypic variation. Does it then, is it then a problem for the breeding of chrysanthemum? And some will actually argue it is not. And they will point to the huge success that chrysanthemum has in the last years. Because right now there are more than, there are hundreds of varieties that can all be grown throughout the year, also in the middle of winter, in all different kinds of colors and different kinds of shapes. So they have been made, so the breeding is possible. However, you also must reckon that this, uh, the amount of varieties that can be grown is highly determined by other technolo technological advancements. And then you have to think about the fact that we have to grow chrysanthemum in the greenhouse. We have to grow them at exactly 20 degrees and thereby we could comfort the plants as much as possible. In addition, especially during winter time, we could grow the plants under light. So above the plants, we could hang a lot of lights to imitate the sun. And thereby, even when the sun is not shining in the Netherlands, maybe for days during winter time, the plant could, t could still maintain its photosynthesis. And then, in addition to this, to these technological advancements, there was also the breeding effort that made it also possible that there were chrysanthemum that also could be grown better during the winter conditions, which are still a bit harsher than during spring and autumn. And so, yeah, this happens. However, and then the next things come up, these conditions that we grow the chrysanthemum in come under pressure. And that is because the horticulture depends highly on energy that has to be put in the greenhouse to comfort these plants. And when we see to the price of energy, this sharply increased during the last year. As we can see here, the energy price now, especially gas, where what is the most, uh, what is the most uh, used energy uh, form, is now four or five times higher. Well, before Corona and before the no, yeah, geopolitical tensions that increased the gas price, around 15% of the turnover of a horticultural company is used to heat up the greenhouses and to make electricity that could uh, give the light the energy it needs. And with the current prices, it will basically mean that instead of 15% of the turnover that must be used in a, comp in a horticultural to company, this will become 60% or 75%. And of course, this is not anywhere profitable anymore. And this will become a major challenge. I mean, it is, already is, because the price increased like this. And therefore, we have to speed up the breeding process, because this is one of the three things that we can actually have like uh, a big influence on. And this is also a point where it pinches, because this breeding process takes a long, a long time. Because to find those needles in this haystack, it can take years. So we have to get ways to find these needles faster. And at this point, new breeding techniques can be used. For example, Right now, it is possible to use market technology to pinpoint specific sequences in a DNA. And by pinpointing those specific sequences in the DNA, which are then having a beneficial allele that maybe can cause the plant to be heat resistant or cold resistant, we can actually find those genetic sequences and highlight if plants have them or if plants don't have them. And of course, this is very powerful. 
In addition to this, like next to this market technology, there is also now the sequencing technology that rapidly increased. So we can now sequence the DNA, and therefore we can also know exactly how these beneficial genes that we are searching for look like. And taking together those two techniques of marker development and then also sequencing technology, and then when they come together, they also add strength in each other. Because marker technology is also highly based on sequence information. Because if you know uh, how the gene looks like what you're searching, then also finding a marker that specifically can find that gene in your whole gene pool becomes also much easier. And here, also, some more difficulties arise with the polyploidy and heterozygosity of the chrysanthemum. And that is because you have six different copies that are different from each other in one plant. So to extrapolate this to human, it will basically mean that I have to extract DNA from you, and I put it in one sample, then I have to extract DNA from you, I put it in one sample, then I extract DNA from you, and I have to put it in one sample, and then they're all together, then they are terrifically mixed, because that's basically chrysant, because it is hexaploid, and we are all diploid. Then we all mix it, we have to put this sample in one machine, and then we have to read the data out of this machine, and then trace back to which human the DNA belongs, but also which copy in which human it belongs. And of course that makes it more difficult. However, it is still needed. And it is still needed because we have to rapidly develop new varieties that can grow in harsher conditions. In conditions that are maybe at 15 degrees during winter. So it costs much less energy to actually grow them. Because if we really can pinpoint and select plants based on the genotype, we can say about these plants, they just grow randomly in the greenhouse. Based on the genome, we can know if they can grow well in summertime, during heat waves, which can also happen, especially in the last couple of years, they happen more often. But we can also say of these plants, without any disease testing, we can say about them if they are resistant or not. And of course, this makes it possible to select our plants the whole year long. So we can select those cold tolerant plants when we grow them in the middle of summer, which is also very useful for chrysanthemum because they're grown throughout the year. I mean, the breeding cycle of chrysanthemum can op like you can grow from one seed to a full plant for chrysanthemum in 12 weeks. So for the reference. So by using these new technologies, those needle that our breeders are trying to find is really highlighted. Those markers can then say what this needle exactly is and where they can find it. So they don't have to search for years. They exactly know which specific plants have the genome that uh, yeah, will help in growing the chrysanthemum better. And of course, this is super powerful. This will greatly increase the genetic gain that we have in our genetic pool. And that brings me actually to the essence of this talk. Because the aesthetics of the chrysanthemum flower is still its main quality. Because consumers will still look at such a flower and think that's beautiful, that makes me happy. However, as breeders and also as growers of chrysanthemum, we have to look much more broad. We have to see behind the beautifulness of the flower. And therefore, for us, the plant must also be, must be able to grow in more sustainable conditions. It must be grown uh, without any pesticides. And therefore, we have to focus on the genome. And by doing that, that means that for us, the flower, uh, like the beauty of the flower, uh, must be like as beautiful from the inside of the flower than it is from the outside of the flower. Which is basically what we have to do in the next couple of years. Thank you. <laughs>